GPT-4 Scale Startup with AI, Episode 99. Yes, that's what it is. Episode 99. We've done 99 of these episodes. And let me tell you, there have been some really memorable episodes. If you check on your favorite podcast network, you can find some of those episodes. Uh, I think one of them we had in late December was with the founder of Reebok. And that was incredible. Uh, also, we had one with the author, Jeffrey Moore, who wrote Inside the Tornado and Crossing the Chasm. And I think that's particularly relevant to the advent of AI and GPT 3.5 and now GPT 4. Because those who can move the quickest and fastest in a wave can benefit the most. You're on Startup Club. We are almost 1 million members strong. If you're listening to this in podcast, you might not know this, but this is actually a live show on Clubhouse. We do every Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern. And you're welcome to come on stage. Our club is run by our CEO and co-moderator here, Michelle Van Tilborg. We have Mimi Ostrander, who writes the blog. And this is Startup Club. And I'm Colin C. Campbell. And the show you're listening to is Serial Entrepreneur Secrets Revealed. And that this show, we're trying to crack the code. We're trying to figure it out how we can help create entrepreneurial wealth. And we've, again, we've had hundreds of interviews on this show already. We're in our episode number 99. And we are really trying to figure out what it is that serial entrepreneurs do to start, scale, exit, and repeat. Today, we're talking about GPT-4. AI, and really about scaling your startup using GPT-4. Michelle or Mimi, do you have any thoughts about today's show? Well, I'm excited about it. And I was thinking about this right as we were coming on. You know, I'm really curious um, how many people here in the room, how many of the members have used ChatGPT? And we really want to hear what your experience was, what your thoughts were, and any suggestions you have for other people. So if you've even used it, you have some kind of opinion or questions, just raise your hand. We want, we want to bring you up to the stage, um, you know, and really, you know, harness the power of the club to, you know, understand and help each other out so that we can all move to, together forward. Thank you. Yeah, and if you'd like to, if you like the topic uh, and you're interested in it, feel free to share this. If you look at the the bottom of the screen there, we have uh, the icon, the second icon from the left. It's an arrow up arrow kit. I'm doing that now myself. And you click on share on Clubhouse and it'll send a signal out to those who know you on Clubhouse. We'd really appreciate you doing that because it it brings in more audience, more community. And that's what this show is going to be all about is really listening and understanding what it is that ChatGPT can do to help scale your business. And again, if you're in the audience and you've used it, we want to hear about your experiences. I mean, they may have been good. They may have been bad. We don't care. It's open. It's an open session. And we, we talk about all topics related to scaling startups and, and helping entrepreneurs gain wealth. So I thought just for fun, I would ask ChatGPT that question. I would ask ChatGPT, Give me 10 reasons, or sorry, 10 ways that um, ChatGPT can help scale a startup. That was exactly the prompt I put into it. And it came out with with, um, some pretty interesting thoughts. First, market research, ChatGPT can analyze large amounts of data to provide insights and market trends. Find that interesting, Michelle, because we're we're talking about the project at Startup Club to do a business plan AI uh solution for startups and market research is sometimes a big component of business plans i'm not going to read everything here but i'll just give you a few tidbits customer support and this is an area where a number of our companies in our incubator have begun to use it as well especially if you have support overseas where their language may not be their first language and you really want to improve their speech i was also able to use this to make the responses more positive. So you can institutionalize positivity in your email responses by using ChatGPT. 
And the third one I'll give you right now, because I don't want to I don't want to go through all 10 right now. We'll break it up over the show. But the third one that I'll give you that ChatGPT came up with was content creation. ChatGPT can generate high quality content, including blogs, posts, social media updates, and product descriptions, saving times and re- time and resources. And I have a little story here, a little confession. Uh, I, if you know the, if you know the club or if you've listened to the show, you've heard that uh, we signed a publishing deal with Forbes for the book Start, Scale, Exit, Repeat. Well, the book was complete in November, and we were designing the cover, and two weeks ago, we had to come up with the inside flap of the cover. And so I took the intro from the book. Here's what I did. It's exactly what I did. I took the intro from the book. I cut and pasted it. I put that into ChatGPT. 3.5 at the time, and I said to ChatGPT, write an inside cover of 10 reasons why someone will want to read this book. And let me tell you, it was insane. It was came up with so many good ideas. Now, I did some editing, did some changes to it, but um, together working with ChatGPT, a project that might have taken me, because I'm not the best writer, to be quite frank, uh, even though I wrote a book, but... The reality is I did have editors at Forbes helping me, you know, with, with the book. But uh, but the fact is I was able to accomplish that task probably within a half hour. And without it, it would have taken me two, two three hours easy and probably a lot more editing from, from other others as well. All right. Well, let's jump right into it. Uh, unless, Michelle, you have something you want to add right now or do you want to just jump right into it? And yeah, I, I want to hear what our members have to say. I mean, this is definitely a hot topic. And even if you have something that's, you know, negative or controversial to say, just come up because we, we want to really hear and have a good meaty conversation here. So let's right. go to Edie. Edie, I think I'm saying your name correctly. Um, tell us what your thoughts are, you know, how you're using it for a business or what your experiences have been. Thank you, Edie. Uh-huh. Uh, hi. Well, thank you for bringing me up here, and thank you for this great conversation. Um, you know, you ha- I raised my hand a, a little prematurely, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I had you had asked if never, had never. Used- we love it. <laughs> but you had asked if anybody had used Chat GPT, and and of course I have. I've actually been like glued to it. I just find it amazing and um and does a much better job at um making my thoughts cohesive i tend to be a little bit wordy and a little bit too flowery and and maybe i'll I'll start um a thought and then i'll i'll deviate i'll go someplace else and then i'll come back to it and then and even when i read some of my own writing i like well why can't i just keep it like all together and it really has this incredible ability to just put everything together for me. It organizes my thoughts better than I ever could. And, um, and I am starting a new business. And so, um, and I'm going to a, a university local here and I'm having like a little booth because I'm looking for people to, you know, to come and join the company. And um, thought that would be a great way to sort of start and find people um, who want to work with me. And so I needed to do it relatively quickly. And, and, you know, I think for, well, for me anyway, I get a little bit nervous about, you know, putting things out there in the world. And I, I re-edit and I edit and I edit and I re-edit and I re-edit. And so I, I wrote up a little bit brochure. I asked, uh, chat GPT to, you know, to make it better to, and on, I put in a, a couple of words and things that, that I needed, uh, um, for the type of people that I was looking for to join the company. And, um, and it did a miraculous job. I was like, this is so easy. Like I could do the work, any work that I, that would take me days to do and, and just really in moments it's, I think it's brilliant. I, re- I really do. And I would love to be able to get onto chat GPT and tell me how I could make, you know, millions of dollars in a startup, you know, company. So great. So if you guys have any ideas or if you've asked the questions to chat GPT and actually came up with some real valid answers, I'm, I'm all in and can't wait to hear what you have to say. And, um, and that's it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, that's, that's great, Edie. And, and uh, it was a pleasure to have you on stage and I'm following you because 
I love to follow people when they come on stage. Uh, there's so many interesting people in this community, and it's 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 great that you shared those comments with us. I, I will say that um, you know, being an entrepreneur, a tech entrepreneur for almost 30 years now, uh, we've seen technology change quite significantly over that period of time, from dial-up to broadband, social media. We've seen technological changes, regulatory changes, and the opportunities in the past have been enormous for startups when there is massive change. I think the 2020s are really going to be all about AI, and we're at the very, very beginning. So this is a historic moment in time. This is an opportunity for entrepreneurs, for startups, for founders to think about how they can use this technology not only to help the startup, they could you might already have a business, right? And and you can use this technology to can help your business. Absolutely. But you may also be able to base a technology or set up a company based on this business. Even my daughter over Christmas, we got excited about this and she uh, put together poemai.com. And it's it's really just a poetry writing service that um, you can have your poetry on canvas if you want to write a poem about your dog or for your mother or something like that. The reality is I don't even have the capability of writing a poem. I mean, period. But you could enter in certain prompts using prompt engineering. And she was able to put together this website, Poem AI. And now they can produce these amazing poems that you can put on canvas. That's just one idea. I'm not saying like that's the, the biggest idea. The one that Michelle and I are, are bouncing around here is Business Plan AI uh, and businessplanai.com, which will be on Startup Club. You'll be able to go directly to that. And if you want to write a business plan, and I don't know how sophisticated we can get with this, Michelle, but I think we could actually go as far as, you know, helping to write private placement memorandums. You know, I think we can go really far, far down the path. We'll start with the, the, the basic business plan that you might show investors and all by answering simple questions. You know, who are my competitors? So you list the competitors and it'll do descriptions of the competitors. What are the risk factors of this type of business? It'll list some risk factors. Those kind of things can be added into the business plan. And uh, it'll look quite sophisticated, even though uh, the amount of effort you put into it may not, <laughs> may not deserve the level, of, uh, the level you'll get, but it'll help you raise funds for your company. So Edie, there are so many business opportunities. Keep your eyes open, keep listening, keep joining. You'll see opportunities wherever you go where they're not utilizing this technology and you can jump in and build a company. All, All right. right, Michelle. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, awesome. You know, and something I just want to mention um, to the members, something that I found valuable is I go to Product Hunt. I don't know how many people go there, but I find like there's so many cool ideas and things that people are doing. And I'm seeing a lot, Colin, a lot of people are doing some really interesting things with ChatGPT. Uh, and I'm gonna mention just one that I saw the other day, actually. It's um, called NARA, N-A-R-A. And these folks are doing a nutritional assistant using ChatGPT through SMS. So I thought that was a pretty cool use. And um, I like those kind of businesses. Um, because those are kind of businesses that, you know, maybe it's not as heavy an investment as like a big platform or some very sophisticated software that you could get up and going. That's one of those areas you kind of look at it. There's competitors out there, but it's like all manual. Imagine if you can really start to harness chat GPT to actually improve people's lives. So, so I thought that was a really cool one that I just recently saw. But um, let's go to Lucas. Lucas. Looking forward to your thoughts on this topic. Lucas, your um, mute is on the bottom right. We can come there. No, there we go. I, thank you awesome. so much. Um, you bet. First of all, thanks for bringing me on, folks. And uh, thank you, uh, Edie, for sharing. Uh, so I am, I, I've been an entrepreneur calling on commercial real estate for quite some time in the sustainability space. Um, so my clients are, you know, some of the larger commercial real estate companies around the country. Uh, during the pandemic, of course, uh, that business slowed down almost to a halt. Um, and I was able to pivot into the medical supply space because I had all my these deep 
roots in, in Asia and other places. So I was able to, and, and of course I did that just to help my company keep uh, afloat. Uh, this is before PPP or EIDL. Um, I, I was kind of early I, because I get so much of my product from China. Uh, I was in contact with them in December of 2019, January of 2020. So I had enough foresight um, with boots on the ground to know that this this pandemic might turn into a thing. So let's let, let's forward fast forward through 2022 and kind of got out of the uh, medical supply space, uh, but did very 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 well uh, during that time. And as I was kind of rethinking a business that I've been in for 15 years, um, the natural progression was uh, to just. Because uh, I'd never been a wholesaler before, I'd always bought my supplies directly from OEM and ODM manufacturers to give myself a competitive edge uh, for when I would bid out, you know, LED lighting and other uh, energy efficiency retrofit work. Um, and so as I, so my my quick win uh, after all that background was just that I was able to create a, a bunch of everything from my pitch decks to some so, to some uh, click funnel uh, lead funnels to um, you know just some of the marketing and wording around this kind of new business because it is a very niche space um, I really am only talking to instead of the asset manage, management side of portfolios I'm now engaging the ownership side of those portfolios and owners of you know billion dollar commercial real estate portfolios, you have to talk to them about NOI, you have to speak very specifically to the things that get them excited. And like, uh, I think it was Michelle shared, uh, you know, my writing is is okay, but it, it, it doesn't always hit where it needs to hit. So uh, a quick win is that I, I landed a, uh, just this Monday after my first meeting landed a, a first uh very large account with a, a company called Graystar, which is one of the largest apartment um, developers in the country. Uh, and, and so it's been fantastic. And I remember that first night that I was uh, uh, up engaging with ChatGPT. It was only, it was about two and a half months ago. And I literally was just asking every kind of question um it was it was addictive i think Edie shared it was just super addictive i was up from from 12 o'clock at night to about five in the morning on my phone just just going crazy so now i, I am a subscriber uh i you know and I, you have slightly more access and the one thing i wanted to comment on was something that colin said is that i've just really followed every kind of influencer or people that are speaking about this on social media. Um, and the, the biggest uh, takeaway I've gotten so far is the inputs or the prompts that from chat GPT say, write it like whatever, a wall street journal, um, you know, journalist or write it like an, uh, you know, CMO or SEO experts. And you can get back, as you said, you know, just amazing results. All right. We are on to Moonra. Moonra. Um, hello. Hi, how Moonra. are you? Yes. I'm fine. I'm Moonra from Nigeria, and this is my first time joining the space. And I'm so happy I'm here because I just finished a 16 pages video production plan using ChatGBT for the first time. And it is mind blowing, like on just how to cook Nigerian jollof. So for me to be able to do this, I feel like this, this, this should be something every entrepreneur should learn how to use. On my ChatGBT, I installed six different Chrome extension, prompt Chrome extensions. And one of the extension has 1,876 prompts. So it gives me, you know, it makes me everything useful to almost everybody. Like I've been having friends calling me, please, I want you to do this for me. I want to do that. I'm like, wow, am I this smart? No, I'm not this AI, but I'm to everybody. So ChatGPT is us. Imagine, Yeah, I think we're having technical problem here, or it could be on our side. 
No, oh, right. she dropped for me too. Oh, she dropped for you yeah, too. Okay, dropped. so if you could try, we really want to hear from you because you got some really good stuff there. If you could just try to get a better Wi-Fi, and we'll come back to you. Um, just give you a minute or two. We'll come right back to you, Monterey. And and James, you're next on the list. We're going round robin here, and uh, we want to hear from you, James. I mean, what's your Chat GPT story? Yo, super excited about AI and. The future, I think it's going to be a major influence, of course, and super, um, yeah, keen to just get involved as much as possible. It's been kind of on my to-do list in life for a little while, and I was going to ask for some guidance. I know there's, um, it's been mentioned there's a lot of influences and resources. Can anyone suggest, like, one starting point for me to kind of get an edge into into the world of chat gpt where i should start or what i should do or just one tiny little step i know there's no right and wrong but any suggestion would be welcome if you don't mind me asking what has been your experience with it so far so i've not i think i downloaded a watch app which didn't really work so well i've used some other um ai search engines but i've not got any experience with chat gpt specifically um in terms of roughly where i want to take it i do most of my writing with old school typewriter so i want to kind of take just the explorative writing that i do creative writing and start to see what i can do with chat gpt but i've got no actual experience so far so uh, colin do you mind if i if i I was about to give you your moderator button actually just, go for it, yeah, Andrew. Go for it. We, we love help. You can yes. tell. All right. Well, hey, this is a, I love this question because um, you, cause you gave a little bit of insight and you're also showing kind of how initial user engagement goes into it. So the first thing I want to put out there is while there are a lot of apps that say that they are uh, GPT-based apps, which isn't an untrue thing, they are often going to be apps that utilize OpenAI's API. What that means in um, in general terms is everything that you submit through that app, they will, they have, they might have their own data retention policies in regards to it. Um, they might, so if anyone is using that app specifically, they being whatever company is utilizing the API, it is not Open AI that is doing that. So if you are getting started, and especially if you're putting anything creative um, or anything that has any sort of intellectual property associated with it. Um, understand that OpenAI does use everything for training purposes. Um, large language models require an enormous amount of user input. So they are looking at all of the data that is coming through. By using it, you are agreeing to it. So make sure that whenever you're submitting, you're comfortable with it being reviewed by the engineers. Now, if you use one of the apps that you see that utilize a wrapper, understand that some an, another third party entity will have access to whatever you're submitting through. Very likely they're keeping full logs of everything that's in there. So that would be another, um, another point there. Those first two things are just a couple red flags to throw up just so you're aware of what's being done with your data. Um, and the place that I would recommend, if you want to experience ChatGBT in its most raw form, they purchased the domain AI.com. Simple as that. AI.com will link you directly to where ChatGBT is. You can register on it um, and use it for free. Um, there is the paid plus model, which you don't have to worry about right away. It just provides faster results, and it will also give you um, early access to GPT-4. And I actually just like 20 minutes ago got my um, API access for GPT-4. Um, and I'm kind of excited to test this out. Um, I'll get to that when it's my turn later on, though. But um, what I would do, first and foremost, just play with it. Ask it questions. Ask it silly questions. And just to get a sense of how it response to you how how does it behave when you start to see that and you're and you're putting stuff in you don't have to follow a guide for that just to get a feel for it and the follow-up thing that i would recommend is you know search uh chat gpt github 
and you'll be able to find different results that will correlate with how you can approach props because the first type of prompts you might want to try is, you know, adopt the persona of um, a business executive who hates this business plan that I'm proposing and provide like different bits of feedback, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, try out the personas and see how those work. And that's going to start to give you a sense of, all right, now that I see how these different pieces work, you can put it together and create different prompts. Like I have these very, very, very long prompts that I use for deep analysis of large blocks of text, but I just sort of evolved them over time, all from just playing around with it. So avoid the apps. Um, so the apps that you see on the App Store, avoid those. Um, AI.com, register on there, play around with it. And at some point when you're more comfortable with details, start to learn the API. And then you, you can even figure out ways of creating your own programs, even if you're not a programmer. That's GPT-4 has made a really big leap with that, but I'll get to that at a later point in the conversation. So my name is Andrew. I'm done speaking. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that, Andrew. Hey, James, um, go on. did I understand you correctly to say that you're a writer and you're like a creative writer? That's correct. Yeah. Um, one thing that my partner does is he is also a writer and he found it very useful to help them just fill in the gaps, for example, in a story arc and in character profiles. So, I mean, just anything you can think of. So he was plugging in things just like, um, here's a story arc. Um, are there any suggestions that you could give me? It can be as broad and as open as that, or as Andrew said, very specific. So, you know, you might say I have X character, uh, they're going down this path, et cetera, et cetera, like build a character profile for me. And it will. And, you know, obviously it might not be as creative as you might be yourself, but, um, you know, to our experience, it, it gives us ideas, right? Like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. And that's very cool. Like just a way to fill it out and supplement in a very, very efficient way. Thank you. I, I also think, Michelle, if you're, if you're not a good writer but you have an expertise you can use that to help create webinars or white papers or you know even if you write it yourself it's in a raw form and then you feed it through um it can actually improve the style now again i like what andrew you said there about persona so it doesn't always have to sound like it's you know written by a corporate executive marketing person it can it can it can it can be a little bit funny or it could be have a little bit edgy or it can you know be written in the style of New York Times reporter. Um, I think that's interesting as well. Well, let's jump to Monica. Monica, thank you for being patient. We would love to hear from you in regards to how GPT has changed your life. <laughs> it's been a time saver, and as soon as I saw the uh, the the title, I said, "Wow, yes, Chat GPT." GPT has been my like go-to for everything. In fact, I wanted to share that we were looking for a content writer because, you know, my staff, we were all busy and we were doing things off the side of our desk. We decided to use chat GPT and Jasper because I had both, but um, we don't need a content writer anymore. And I wanted to say that because it, it was just, it's a, it's a savings to us, but um, so savings to me and my time, but also for my, my side hustle, I should say, um, I use it as well. And it's just wonderful to use. I mean, it's, it's probably the best thing I've ever had happen to me. And I, you know, I wanted to say that because I think everyone should use it. Like James, you're looking for, you know, a writer. Now you have to be careful. I, I wanted to say that as well, because I think sometimes, you know, there's some plagiarism or something like that going on, but you have to read what you're writing, but it, you know, what it's writing, uh, what it returns, but it's a godsend. And the time saving that I have uh, for blog posts, uh, copy for the websites and social media is, it's been amazing. Uh, the unfortunate thing is I'm wondering what will happen. And I don't know if you guys have touched on this, what will happen with content writers at this point. I mean, there, there was, you know, a huge influx of, of 
that need at one point. And now I don't even know if that's something that we actually need. <laughs> so, um, but that's my take on uh, chat GPT. I just love it. Yeah, it, it's sometimes, you know, these technological changes can be devastating for certain industries um, and, but yet unleash so many opportunities. And it's, I think as startups, you know, we're looking, we're looking at those opportunities and that same writer might take on a different role in a different way, your organization, because you're successful and you're able to hire more people doing other things. And that's typically the way we've seen it evolve over the last hundred years, ever since the day the buggy whip went, uh, uh, became, you know, um, obsolete by the car. Uh, we're seeing it happen over and over again, even with electric cars and every technology that we see out there, it has a way of eliminating jobs at the beginning, but then somehow unleashing through entrepreneurs and startups, unleashing a power within the, a community that can actually build and create amazing things that can change the world and actually result in hiring more people. I, I know that's sort of a convoluted argument, but we won't turn this into a political discussion. But I, um, I wanted to share the next three that ChatGPT, so ChatGPT has, has joined our show today. The first three were market research, customer support, and content creation. The next three I'll give you right now, I did 10. My, my query was, you know, tell me 10 uh, ways startups can use ChatGPT to scale their business. And it came up with 10. First, first one being market research. The second one being customer support. The third one being content creation. The, the fourth one is lead generation. And I think that's very interesting. We're always looking for more leads. ChatGPT can help startups identify potential leads, generate targeted email campaigns, and increase the conversion rate of marketing campaigns. That's interesting too. Um, it's just increasing your, your uh, conversion rate for a website or even for a marketing campaign. The next one was personalized recommendations. ChatGPT can analyze customer data to provide personalized product recommendations, improving customer engagement and retention. So we were looking at um, potentially doing an experiment with Dali, where we have a product, we have a company called Paw.com and it's, um, it sells dog beds and, and rugs and blankets and, and uh, car seats. Uh, and those kind of things. And we are thinking of doing a targeted marketing, personalized marketing using Dolly, where you, t you know, you have the one photo and just using Dolly, you can, you can within 30, 10 seconds, wipe out the, the dog in the picture and then say, replace with a King Charles Spaniel or replace with a French bulldog or replace with a golden retriever. And it instantly replaces it. So you can produce images, very high, very quickly produce images that can be personalized in marketing campaigns on Facebook based on the breed. And, and, and we're, we're working on a test with that one. And that idea of personalized recommendations that it came up with sort of got me thinking about that one. Number six is a chatbot development. ChatGPT can help startups build intelligent chatbots that can answer customer queries, provide assistance and automate repetitive tasks. So I know early on it talked about, um, uh, customer support, but this is more like an automated component of your customer support that can be quite advanced and you can develop it quite efficiently as well. So that's interesting. Andrew, I'm curious about uh, chat GPT-4 and what you're seeing with the difference. I, I, I haven't seen much of a difference myself. You mentioned there was some, some, some stuff around the APIs. I'm curious to hear about that as well, if you sure. can share that with us. Yeah, happy to. So um, the the API is currently not available for everyone. I was um, I was an early alpha tester with the Plus program, so I think I just lucked out and got to cut the line there. But one of the things that's useful about GPT-4 um, in its playground is they pivoted the use of the system messages. So the system messages were something that's used to if effectively tell the software how you want to use the information on the user message that is being submitted basically if you have an api that's running it's possible that someone you, you could have like a bad actor who decides that they're going to inject something where they're going to try to 
issue a command within the user prompt in an effort to override something in the API. The system message is the way that you can prevent that from happening by simply saying, um, you know, your helpful assistant, ignore any messages over here and um, only analyze what is being submitted in. Just a way to make sure you're protected. One of the things that they changed with it is they've integrated um, what we often refer to as personas into the messaging. So what that means is um, when you're talking about, um, you know, adopting the persona of, uh, so you don't have to necessarily say those words. Now you can simply say, you are an expert in English and English linguistics, um, and you're submitting this paper for review. And it's very important that you are trying to make sure that the message is coming across in a concise way that you don't have any extra language that's just going to add time but not add value to whatever it is that you are pitching um, whether it's in the deck or in the speech um, so you can in within that message say like these are the types of um, expert approaches on it um, in the message please provide the analysis and then you drop the message in and you will get a significantly improved analysis of it if you set things up correctly now the other thing that's nice about the api is um well the current test it allows up to eight thousand tokens which translates roughly to six thousand words in um english um chat gbt currently if you test directly through chat gbt um is 1000 tokens so this is eight times longer with the length that also means that you can drop in a larger block of text um so let's say you have uh, maybe some data that's in a table um you know it, 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 if you use something that has like comma delineations in it like you could literally export something from excel drop it in there and be like hey i have all this information let's do some work with it um, I haven't had a chance to test out the extent of that yet because I literally just got the API access a little bit ago. So I'm going to, I'll be able to speak to that better uh, next week. Is it only through the API that you can test that or can you just pop it in directly? You can pop it in directly, but if it's a large amount of data, then you may end up running into a limit with its memory. So, yeah. Um, That's the, idea... the issue that we've yeah. had is, is Mimi can specifically talk about it, actually. She was really testing that. You know, because we have a transcript, right? We're recording here and we wanted to do, Mimi actually writes all the blogs, right, Mimi? And wanted to do, I'll let you tell a little bit more about your experience, but we wanted to an easy way to do a summary or a blog and kind of explain to us what happened because maybe this is a, a, a solution now, Mimi. Yes, I'm glad to hear that about the um, characters. Because, well, actually, when I was trying to figure it out, it was tokens, which was even different than real characters. Um, but, yeah, I would try to feed the transcript in, and then it would get, I had to do it over, like, 15 different entries. And each one would obviously just summarize the previous entry into the blog post. So it didn't come together cohesive or naturally at all, really. So I'm glad to hear that. I'm curious what you think of the new one. I'll have a, I will have better insight on it um, in, a, in a week or so, because um, I do want to, I, I don't want to do like a limited amount of testing and then realize that I've, um, I didn't give it enough um, exploration. And, but this also does give you control over, in the API, it refers to it as a temperature, which is a value that's set anywhere between zero and one. If it's closer to zero, it's going to provide very rigid results for what you're looking for. So depending, if you're trying to generate ideas, maybe you want to go like closer to one if it's really creative. If you are, if it's a very established business market and you're trying to identify the most reasonable locations that you could potentially um, seek investors in or, um, or potential sites if you're trying to choose new locations to open your business in, maybe you want to set that closer to the middle, around 0.5 or even less than that. Um, a lower temperature doesn't mean the results are worse. You just have to think, how much information already exists out in the world that can um that this could make a comfortable reliable decision without it having to guess and if there is a lot of information that it could have available bearing in mind too that this is only trained up through 2000 september 2021 um but once this is more live and has access to live information which well, we'll see when that happens that could be a, that could still be a long roadmap but 
all of that aside, um, there is like a very, very slight pivot that I want to um, introduce. And yesterday, Microsoft announced the launch of the 365 Copilot. And this announcement went, for anyone who's following very closely, um, we were very excited about it, but it was surprising how little of it was covered in the main media because the truth is what could potentially be offered in this product is the first time we could see an enormous scale of information. So what it will do, um, so with 365 Copilot, um, it's going to work with the various Office Suite products. So, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, et cetera. Um, and there's a lot of automation, little small things that it'll be able to do along the way. Um, you'll be able to auto-complete things better. Your efficiency in Excel, you don't have to think about the exact structure of different formulas that are used. Um, and if you're not familiar with using Excel, it would be a great help in you being able to produce your own things. All of this stuff, Great, it's helpful, but not really groundbreaking. What is groundbreaking is the information that it uses goes through um, what they refer to as Microsoft Graph. Um, and that's something that um, anyone can, can look up online to see what it is. But Microsoft Graph is effectively where all of your data for your account is stored. So stuff that you've created in all of the various parts of Office, including stuff like OneNote, and notably SharePoint. So let's say you have a significant amount of information. This could be stuff related to your business. James, I'm a fellow writer, so stuff related to world building. You could have a bunch of things that are sitting in OneNote. Maybe you have like a folder, a folder structure set up on um, a SharePoint of some kind. And if you have an active 365 account, all of the information that is contained within here. Um, and one of the things Microsoft said is, Anything that is utilized through Microsoft Copilot does not get used for any training purposes with the uh, with the um, um, with the models with the training of the models. With that said, having access to all that information that also means that your information with what Microsoft is saying is going to be secure. There's not going to be engineers who are going to be looking at it. You don't have to worry about it going through some third party. And if there is sensitive business data, this is the first real use case of it, um, at least from the open AI perspective that will allow you to use, um, to use like the full force of this and feel comfortable with your data. But check this out. Imagine you have all of this information that is located um, within SharePoint. And bear in mind, we haven't had a chance to, to test this publicly. This is going off of yesterday's announcement and a lot of speculation. So, you know, we'll see where, where it will truly land. But if you have, let, let's say that you have market researchers that pull up information on different cities, or you can even look at, all right, let's look, what are the populations of the top, you know, 50 cities? Where are they? Now review the different entertainment venues that, um, that are there. How many are there? How many like maybe golf courses specifically, you know, whatever your need is for the market. And all of this is just stored as information in Excel files. You could ask it then, in theory, if this works the way that it's promised, to looking at all of the information um, that we have here, pro please provide like an analysis of which markets um, would be most feasible for entry based on you know property value, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're not limited in characters. Whatever is on that SharePoint, if it's um, five documents, if it's 5,000 documents, all of that becomes part of the analysis. Once it's integrated into that Microsoft graph, then it knows how to read, work through that data. And if you're like me and some of your organizational structures are absolute trash and you have stuff that is stored all over the place, from what they're saying, it can figure out pretty well a lot of the intentions that are there and we'll see if there's any feedback for questions. This could be another really, really huge thing to talk about once it launches. So that's a, uh, well, maybe not too quick, but that is an overview of um, what Copilot could be, which could be another thing that will better enhance our ability to utilize with AI. My name is All right. I, I'm just going to say that sounds so incredibly amazing because just at a high level, what you said is it could take a massive amount, let's just 
put it there, up to a massive amount of data that's unstructured and structure it for, you know, just some amazing kind of output results that, you know, pretty much are flexible infinitely, right? Meaning not just adding numbers or, you know, answering one question. That's the maximum amount of flexibility. It's hard from, you know, it, it just boggles the mind and I'm super excited you know, to learn more about this. Thanks for sharing that, Andrew. That's really, really cool. And anyone, you know, on the stage or has had companies, I mean, it's not uncommon for entrepreneurs just to have, like you said, lots of, you know, data and documents, but they're typically unstructured, which makes it almost impossible, uh, you know, to, to manage or to extract in a meaningful way. So, that's huge, just huge. All right, well, that's really cool. Well, do we wanna move on here? I know everybody's been very patient. We have uh, 15 minutes left. Dave, we're gonna come to you in a minute here. We wanna give Olagun a chance here as well. Olagun, are you able to speak now? Yep, there we go. Yeah, sure, can you hear me? Yes, we do. Nope. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, well, um, I just started using chat GPT quite recently myself. Uh, I come from the development of programming background, software development. Um, and uh, I discovered it uh, around Christmas period last year. I started using it. I've been hearing about it. Uh, I've had uh, insight into or uh, language modeling like from um, Google's work on the transformational, um, I was aware of Lambda and now the Palm. And um, I, I've kind of come from trying to train the model sort of side of things, but I'm quite impressed with uh, chat, uh, kind of the response um, I've been getting from chat GPT. I've been trying to use it like, uh, Siri and Google Assistant sort of thing, but I'm not sure if you can retain these information once you finish your session on with it sort of thing. Um, I hope someone can correct me on that one. Uh, uh, but uh, with regards to startup, um, I, I have uh, an idea that I've been kind of playing around with with e-learning and um, with emailing. Kind of you emailing? Is that what you said? E-learning. Emailing. E -learning. Thank you. Like, no, e-learning. E-learning. Okay, LMS. yeah. So we're, we're e-learning. Sorry, but it's the accent. We Sorry. all don't speak English as well as you. Just so you know. Uh, uh no, no, I'm sorry. E-learning, um, learning management system, sort of thing. Um, I've had quite exposure cre creating um, uh, e-learning with learning management systems, and um, I was kind of trying to play around with some ideas on how to integrate um, Chat GPT, the API. I, I've, um, Beside using with the chat GPT on the OpenAI um, platforms, I've generated the API keys and using it with Postman sort of things and getting some response from it sort of things. And um, yeah, and kind of learning about the prompt and the completion, the, kind of the scope of the response uh, kind of thing, the information that is, that is sp uh, spitting back to you. Uh, and, I'm kind of at the phase of trying to get that into learning management system for Scrum. Like kind of, I'm trying to play around with how to use it to train um, Agile, to train people on Agile, kind of create an e-learning for Agile and Scrum and Sprint sort of things, and using ChatGPT for reinforcement learning on the e-learning platform. I'm not sure if anyone have an insight into that, if this, if this possible. Um, but yeah, like something of that, of that nature. Um, but for now I'm, I'm just still playing around with it, kind of being impressed with the content it's generating. I also for about, um, crit of uh, using chat GPT for generating dynamic content, um, on websites, sort of things like based on kind of the response that is being given, just kind of get some kind of different kind of content like for different users so in terms of website, web page content sort of thing. Um, that's also another idea that kind of occurred to me that uh, another possibilities. 
But yeah, like the e-learning, um, using ChatGPT for reinforcement learning on Agile because um, I've got a couple of people that I'm trying to get onto Agile and I don't know how to train them. And I'm thinking, can I create an e-learning solution um, that uh, ChatGPT can assist in kind of reinforcing like whenever they return back to learning? So I think where they left off. So I think you can yeah. perhaps kind yeah, of... Yeah, and I think, I think um, you're, that's the first time I've heard, the, first time I heard this idea of using it for e-learning but I got to believe that there's a way of doing that. There's got to be a way. And, 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 and it's not doesn't just produce help produce the content, but sometimes it's the format of content. We were working on um, uh, a part of the book that's being published uh, by Forbes called Start, Scale, Exit, Repeat. And we were working on, there were seven or eight areas of the book where it lent itself to be creating a chart uh, but when we had written it out, it wasn't written out as a chart, and we were able to just plop it into ChatGPT, and it produced this great chart with uh, uh, headings and you know and whatnot. And um, so I think it can actually help out with formats and things like that. It it could definitely be, you know, let's say you're creating a um, a, a document on a particular industry. Maybe it's how to use ChatGPT from or how to play chess or how to do whatever, and you can use ChatGPT to help you write that ebook quite easily. A anyone else have any other ch thoughts on on e-learning? Yeah. yeah, I can uh, I can pour in really quickly. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Lewis. Olagun, um, if you check your back channel, um, I really like uh, your mission. Uh, so I gave you a little, how would you say, fire for your mission. Um, if you check Thank your you. back channel, um, you'll see um, prompts literally stack prompting uh, or prompt stacking rather. Uh, so you can build out a course, build out the worksheets, build out the modules, build out everything. That's a complimentary gift from my community to yours. I really like your mission. I like what you're a part of. The e-learning is something I accomplished in the first day uh, that I kind of took a crack at ChatGPT. Um, in its basic model, uh, I don't pay for anything. Uh, when it comes to ChatGPT, I attach it to the internet, give it all the data points it can ab absolutely imagine. Uh, utilizing web chat, uh, web chat GPT three or web chat GPT. Um, with that being said, I created a financial literacy, real estate, blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFT, artificial intelligence, and uh, um, creative writing course <laughs> for seven to 14, 14 to 18 and 18 to 75. Um, these are six week, five day a week course. I mean, six week, five day a week courses. Uh, to teach e-learning. I'm also a, a, an adjunct professor at DePaul University, my former alma mater. Um, to, I'm in works with that, uh, that community to help build out a scale system for college students as well. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot available guys. Um, and I wish more people were dedicated to teaching, right? Now, I mean, not courses and stuff. I, I teach courses and all that stuff, but I'm not interested in that. The kids, them taking this out of the schools um knowing full well that there's so many creative little kids look you hear my kids in the background right um but i i don't want to over inundate the room I, I i really appreciate what you guys have got here i've always been a huge fan of the startup club so olagon i hope that that added some value to you Well, that was so cool, Lewis, and um, that was so generous of you. So thank you for coming up and sharing and really sharing. Oh, here he is. He's back, all Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, I clicked on the wrong button. I don't want to seem as unappreciative, Mr. Lewis. Thank you very much. We really appreciate the comments. Cheers. Excellent. So um, we only have a few minutes left here. This has been an amazing discussion. Um, so, Dave. Yeah, hi, thanks. We got. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've been uh, doing a bunch of uh, community education work uh, around uh, ChatGPT. We've done events where we pull about 50 local entrepreneurs uh, in our area together <clears throat> and talked about the projects that they're doing. Um, there, you, there were people that were talking about uh, customer validation, um, persona development, uh, was just a number of great, great things. Um, I work for a custom software development firm. We have a ton of requests that are coming in 
um, right now for people that want to develop integrations uh, into OpenAI. And, and um, we're talking a lot about chat GPT, uh, but there's also Whisper, which is the speech recognition component uh, of what they're doing. There's Dolly, which is doing the, the uh, you know, artistic uh, vision. Um, I, you know, it's been absolutely amazing to watch people kind of unearth, um, you know, these possibilities. I think it's important to recognize, um, Olegan was talking about something really important, which was that he's working on the training side of it. ChatGPT right now knows what it's been taught and it's been taught an awful lot and it uses this corpus of training, right? That everything that it's learned, it uses to give you a response. It's really similar to when you're typing inside of an email and your email program is, or your chat is giving you the next word, which is incredibly at times unoriginal because it has only, it can only tell you what it's been told. Um, and I think that's really, really important to know that the training side of it is gonna become so much more important um, that we'll start to see is what we're seeing now is companies that want to keep their own private corpuses um, and ha start to uh, close down some of the walled gardens that we've seen or, or bring back walled gardens that we've seen um, because now what you know is going to be that much more of a competitive analysis or a competitive advantage. So I think that's important to know about when you're using it. Um, just the uh, the difference between uh, what it's telling you and what you know. I think that was kind of what Andrew was talking about when he was talking about Andrew, the 365 Copilot, was that Copilot is based on you. It's based on your accounts. It's based on your emails. It's based on your Excel sheets and, and things like that. And, and that becomes really, really interesting. Um, because it has now a frame of reference built from your experience, your data. Wow, there's so much to, you know, think about and learn and talk about. And this has been a fantastic um, conversation. Thank you for adding that, Dave. And I love hearing how members are helping each other and, you know, just trying to help the community. But before we end today's session, Lewis, did you, you want to go? I, I know you've been so kind in helping others. Did you have anything else to add, Lewis? Um, yeah. Uh, so really quickly, I don't want to take up too much oxygen. Um, first of all, these people in this room are- Can you get a little bit louder? Uh, uh, sorry. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, can you hear me okay? Still a bit light, yeah, but yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So hold on for just a minute. Hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better now. Oh, wow. Uh, perfect. Wow, it's night and day. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so uh, I want to give a shout out to my partner, Alicia, uh, in, the, in, the, in the audience real quick. Um, we've been teaching a lot, um, but it really comes down to the community service. Uh, we've been hosting classes about all this stuff. But the impact to allow non-for-profits to, uh, uh, to apply for grants in seconds, um, we helped one of the members, the Democratic Republic of Congo, apply for grants internationally today, uh, li literally live on Zoom. All of our classes are on Zoom, so it's not just clubhouse conjecture. Um, but allowing that gentleman to apply for millions of dollars worth of grants in seconds, break down the ideology, that was something special today. Um, so if you guys could, please continue these type of rooms. Keep, please continue to push the envelope, ask questions, ask why, because it makes all the difference for the world at large. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Shout out to you guys and shout out for the movement. If you guys haven't followed the club, the Startup Club is one of the longest running clubs on Clubhouse. Uh, when I first started almost two and a half years ago, three years, this is one of the clubs that I came into and I always, uh, I always come back. So shout out to you guys and I love what you guys are doing. Oh, that's great. And, uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, we just love the fact that everybody came on stage during the show today and, and really contributed a lot, a lot more than we could ever do on our own. And I know when you do come on stage, I'd like to follow you. And even Dave, even though you don't have your, 
your photo there. I, I still followed you. you. You gave us some some great content and appreciate your helping the co moderate as well, Andrew. Um, I wanted to share the the last three, uh, last four from ChatGPT on the query I gave ChatGPT, which was, uh, yeah, tell me uh, ten ways you can startups can scale their business using ChatGPT. And number seven was sales forecasting. ChatGPT can analyze sales data to predict future trends, enabling startups to make more informed decisions about inventory management and sales strategies. Well, that's one I have not suggested our e-commerce companies in the incubator here, Michelle, use, but I got to figure out how, how that one works, that piece works. Business strategy, ChatGPT can provide startups with valuable insights into trends, emerging technologies, and best practices, helping them develop effective business strategies. Again, I think that can line up well with our, our idea to do uh, businessplanai.com. Employee training, ChatGPT can provide on-demand training. Here we go, e-learning. On-demand training and support for employees, reducing the time and resources required for training programs. Oh, I love that idea. And then number 10 was social media management. ChatGPT can help startups manage their social media presence, generating content, engaging with followers, and analyzing metrics to improve engagement and reach. So today, the show, the community came together, put together some really great ideas of how we can help scale our startup. And ChatGPT also contributed to it by offering 10 ideas. Mimi's gonna to put together a blog and we're looking forward to seeing all of you next week uh, back on the show. We do the show every Friday, Dave, at two o'clock Eastern. And we have so many phenomenal authors who come on the show and share with us their expertise. And we interview them and we, 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 we want people from the audience to come up and ask questions and participate in the conversation. Uh, we've got some phenomenal authors coming on uh, over the next 60 days. If you want to know who's coming on, go to www.startup.club and sign up to the email list. We've had on uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful on Startup Club. We've had on Jeffrey Moore on this show who wrote Crossing the Chasm. We've had on Joe Foster who started Reebok. We've had on Vern Harnish who's a, a, a scale-up coach. We've had on so many great authors, experts, billionaires, serial entrepreneurs, on this show but if you want to if you want to hear from them if you want to know when they're coming on please sign up to that email list so that you are aware of it we only send an email out once a week and it's only about our calendar and our shows thank you very much for joining us and we'll see everyone next week thanks andrew <laughs> thank you thank you everyone you're always welcome to come comod andrew you always are hey happy to be here it's an All exciting right. time. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for the room.